Capturing a focus stacked landscape photograph is both time consuming and difficult. Wrong. In this video, I'm going to show you how to capture and process a focus stacked landscape photograph in around five minutes. So what is focus stacking and why would you use it? Let's start with the why. Normally when you've got a scene and you're out in the landscape and perhaps you've got a, a picture that you want to take that has plenty of foreground, almost from the very start of where the base of your tripod legs are, all the way out into the distance. First thing you probably do is close down the aperture. You probably look at something like maybe F13, maybe even F16, uh, depending on the type of camera you've got. I'm using a, a full frame camera. But what happens once you start getting into the past F13, you start to shoot to F16 and beyond, you get a thing called diffraction. So while you've shut down the aperture and you're trying to get more depth of field, what happens is certain parts of the image start to become soft. So that, that goal of shutting down the aperture to get more sharpness or more depth of field, you start to lose a little bit of the crispness of the image. So what do you do when you want to photograph everything from the foreground very close to the camera all the way out to the distant horizon? You can use a technique called focus stacking. And what you do with focus stacking is you take a series of images taken at different focal points throughout the scene, normally at an aperture that's optimal for your lens. Typically, most lenses shoot really well at f8, so you maybe take three or four images at different focal points, and then when you get back, you will post-process them using something like Photoshop, and they will merge all the sharp part, bits of that image into one single file. And what you get as a result is you get an image that has sharpness from the very closest object all the way through to the distant horizon. Now, this is not something you might want to do all the time. Quite often, you'll just shoot it in your F8, F11, F13, and you'll be quite happy. But it's, focus stacking is one of those tools that's quite useful to know, quite handy to have in your toolbox, so that when you do get an image like I'm about to show you just now, actually just spend a little bit of time capturing a series of images will yield much better results. It's important when you're going to take a series of images, you want them to all look pretty well exactly the same. In this instance, I want them to be all the same exposure and white balance. The only thing that's going to vary is the focus point that I use. So in order to achieve that consistency, I'm going to have to really set the camera up in manual mode. So that's uh, manual ISO, manual aperture, manual shutter speed, and manual white balance. Last thing I want to do is when I get back and I've got this series of images and I've maybe had an automatic white balance, one of the white balances of the images is different from the others. And you know, yes, you can create, uh, fix all these things in post-production, but who wants to? You, know, you want to keep life as simple as possible, so let's keep the exposures the same and the white balance the same. So in my example that I've got here, I've got an F8 ISO 64, I think it's on 1 40th of a second, and I've got it on daylight white balance. Every shot is going to be consistent and that's going to make post-processing a lot easier. Okay, let's take our series of shots. Now, I've kind of guessed for this scene, I'm going to take four shots. The number of shots that you'll take will vary from scene to scene, but typically for landscape photographs, I think three or four is going to be enough. Now, you can choose to manually focus on each of your points, whichever camera technique you prefer. I prefer having a single point uh, and using the autofocus system. So the first one I'm going to pick is I'm going to pick a little spot there on those foreground rocks, autofocus. My camera's on a timer. That's just the way I like to work. Taking the picture, gonna move my focus point up to the middle of the foreground, just be in front of the tool. Autofocus, take the picture, wait for the timer. And then I'm gonna move the focus point up to the tour itself. Autofocus, take the shot, wait for the timer. There we go. And then I'm gonna focus somewhere in the hills over there. Autofocus, press the shutter button, wait for the timer got my shot. Now, before you leave the scene, always important to always play back your images and have a look. Just check that you get, 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 get the focus point right and that you've got sharp areas throughout each of your photographs. Once you've done all that, it's time to head back and merge these images in post-processing. 
So I've checked the back of the camera and I'm happy that I've got all the photographs I need to do a successful focus stack. So why don't we head back home and I'll show you how I post-process these images to create that final focus stacked image. Hello and welcome back. Before we move on, I just want to ask you if you are enjoying this video, please do remember to hit that subscribe button. And if you do, or if you are already a subscriber, remember to click on that little bell icon. That way you'll receive a notification as soon as I post up a new video. Right, with all that said, let's jump into Lightroom and we'll start the process. So what I need to do is first of all, select all four images. So I've got four of my photo stack, and then I'm going to right hand click on any of those images. And from the context menu, I'm going to do edit in, and there are a whole bunch of uh, Photoshop options here. It's important to select the one as open as layers in Photoshop. By selecting open layers in Photoshop, it opens all four images into a single Photoshop document rather than into four individual Photoshop documents. And click on that and Photoshop loads up. Photoshop then runs a script and it loads those files into a single document. It takes a little bit of time depending on the speed of your computer. So what we need to do now is stage one, and which is to do auto align. Sometimes when you take pictures, there can be very subtle differences in the focal length or slight movement in the camera. So the auto align bit will help align all those images so they all line up ready to do the focus stack. So we select all four layers on the right hand side, go up to the edit menu, select auto align layers. We just leave it on auto and click on OK. And then Photoshop will analyze those images and try and get them all lined up. Right, once that process is complete, it's time to actually do the focus stack. So while all four images are still selected on the right hand side, click on the edit menu and we'll go down to auto blend layers. The option here we want to select is stack images. Now you also notice there's an option there for content aware fill. Now, if there has been some slight um, changes when the auto align happens, you'll, you'll see them along the, the, the very outer edges of your images shown by the sort of black and white checked mark. Now you can get Photoshop to try and fill in those areas. Now, if you're taking these pictures on a tripod, there really shouldn't be that much in the way of black and white area. And depending on the complexity of your scene and how confident you are that Photoshop can fill those areas in without it looking a bit strange, you can choose to select that option. Typically what I do is though, I just leave that off and I will just perform some very slight cropping just to cut out those um, transparent areas. So click on OK. Okay, that's it all done. The focus stack is complete. Now you will see around the outer edges, there may be some um, of those black and white areas. Like I say, we'll just crop those out. Uh, you can see the masking down the right hand side where Photoshop has intelligently decided where to mask between the two different layers to give you that sharpness. Now, that's pretty well it. All we have to actually do is save the file. So I'm just gonna click up and do file, save. If we have a look at the final image, we can see it's all sharp there and the foreground rocks to the mid-ground, onto the tour, and then out to the distance hill. And that's really as uh, difficult as it gets. Right, we're just about done here. Hopefully that video has shown you how easy it is to do a focus stacked image for in landscape photography. Now, I have actually done another focus stacking video. It goes into a bit more detail and um, it looks particularly at the auto stacking feature you can find in a lot of modern Nikon digital SLRs and their mirrorless cameras. So please do check that out. And it also goes into a bit more detail on how to do focus stacking with lots of different layers and how to correct for some of the errors that Photoshop might come up with, uh, particularly when you're dealing with uh, moving subjects, perhaps when you've got a coastal scene that you do a focus stack for. I've got an example of how that works by. So if you want a, another sort of more detailed look, particularly around the Nikon features and more post-processing, uh, do check out that longer form video. But hopefully this little video uh, has given you the skills to go out there and confidently capture a uh, focus stacked landscape image. Right, that's just about it for me. I really hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, and if you've got any questions or comments, please do leave them uh, just below the video description there. I really do try and read and reply to everyone's comments. And if you've got some extra time, please do check out some of my other videos. I'll include some links in the corners of the screen just now. Until the next one, see you then.